Hello, welcome back. So, you in the last class you have seen cytochrome C oxidase, right? That is quite a fascinating enzyme, this heme copper oxidase. You have seen this heme and how copper center is oriented right in front of this heme, but you have 5.19 angstrom distance between iron and the copper center. We have seen how synthetic chemist has tried um, to, to understand the mechanism of this reaction. I think one of the major query that need to be answered is how these 4 electron and 4 proton process is taking place so that uh, oxygen can be converted to water in a perfectly catalytic manner. Well, we started seeing how synthetic chemist has approached this problem. As in enzyme, one heme and one copper center, and they are planned perfectly or placed perfectly, right? Synthetic chemist tries to do that by various ways. One of the ways that we have discussed, as we have discussed, this is the one is to one mixture of this iron and copper complex and then we also can have a tethering the same thing with the tether these are tetradentate ligand there is tridentate ligand and the porphyrin center. Of course, we can have a porphyrin center attached with a tridentate ligand. Overall no matter what we you do I think the exciting part was irrespective of the cases in all these cases we have reduction of the oxygen, we are going to create water from oxygen, we have reduction, double reduction one each from electron each from iron and copper to form the peroxo pieces, right. We have seen that uh, this has been crystallographically characterized in one instance where we see that heme center, iron center is bound with oxygen or peroxide in an side on bound geometry and the copper is bound in an end on bound geometry as you can see the parameter from the crystal structure. This is an in very, very interesting crystal structure. Well, um, the solution study of course, ma many studies are done and these, these are very, very, um, very, very you know sensitive study you have to do it really perfectly uh, and lifetime of these species intermediates are not that great. So, you have to take care of those issues as well. Um, so, when heme is appended with this tridentate ligand this is a little bit better model that is mainly because of the fact that um, copper B in the cytochrome C oxidase has uh, has uh, this tridentate ligand system. Of course, not exactly this ligand, but, uh, but the 3 nitrogen centers are there, right. So, what it has been found that immediately it forms uh, upon reacting with oxygen uh, a iron 3 superoxide species which can then subsequently be reduced further to peroxo species. So, see uh, what it allows us to do essentially is uh, we can have stepwise understanding of, of how oxygen is getting converted to water. Oxygen is getting reduced stepwise and the intermediate forming during this process can be followed smoothly, right. Of course, we need to have the spectroscopic technique and, uh, and, and, and uh, experimental skill set, right. But as you can see from the uh, spectra, this blue compound over here is decomposing, a new green species is forming and disappearing and overall this new iron 3 copper 2 peroxo species is forming. This can also be followed of course by UVVs and other spectroscopic technique. But as I was telling you that in the last class irrespective of what we do uh, in all the cases it is a iron copper 
heterodinuclear peroxo species. There is no homonuclear peroxo species forming between the two copper centers because you can have another copper coming in uh, irrespective of whether it is tethered or not tethered. Um, you have a peroxo species forming in between iron and copper. This is for a tetradented ligand system. You have seen the crystal structure how this is side on on iron and uh, eta 1 on copper. And in case of tethered also as you see these values are almost same right. This further emphasizes that these are the exactly same compound of course, these changes are due to this uh, you know tethering slight changes, but these are completely um, characteristic of uh, you know absolutely characteristic of the peroxo species oxygen oxygen stretch at that you have seen in many other uh, many other classes where oxygen oxygen stretching in, uh, in, in, in case of resonance Raman is quite diagnostic of this peroxo species being present over there right. We can do the weight in labeling um, so that can show that it has been shifted to let us say 744 wave number in this case and therefore uh, not 744, 788 minus 44 yes that would be 744 and then delta 1802 is 44 wave number right. So, as you see over here this is completely consistent with this compound as well. well for with a tetradented ligand system as you have seen Naruta got a crystal structure that is clear, but for a tridented ligand system there is no crystal structure so far neither in enzyme nor in synthetic setup. Uh, but what scientists were able to show very clearly that it is a peroxo species is forming between the iron and the copper center and each of the centers are giving one electron to the oxygen moiety to make it peroxo just like what we see over here ok. Interestingly I think uh, most interestingly uh, that this um, oxygen oxygen stretch in resonance Raman is coming 767 and uh, these are consistent uh, with the fact that there is a peroxo species forming. Okay. Similarly, one can see that there is a um, there is um, a peroxo species formation between the iron and copper if it is tethered okay. that means attached together. So, without attaching with the porphyrin moiety or with attaching with the porphyrin moiety the resonance Raman data remains similar also the delta 18 O 2 remains similar all these are consistent. Uh, with the fact that that stepwise reduction is happening as you have seen in this case first iron gives one electron then copper gives another electron right. So, ligand superstructure and copper ligand density tridented versus tetradented modulate the oxygen oxygen frequency as well as their bond strength right that is very very uh, very very simple I would say these can be followed by resonance Raman and UV visible in some cases XAPS and other spectroscopic technique these are all done at very low temperature. So, that these spaces have some lifetime or it can be followed little bit better ok. At room temperature these studies are invalid because you know you will end up getting a iron oxo copper one oxygen atom iron oxo copper iron oxo copper or some other side reaction might will happen. In any case what you have seen so far in copper chemistry that if you take these copper ligand complex similar to what we were taking earlier these copper ligand complex itself can react uh, with each other to give the copper in on bound peroxo species right. So, these are tetradented ligand 4 nitrogen center 4 nitrogen centers will give you n on bound geometry right. If you are taking a tridented ligand for copper and reacting these are copper 1 complex to start with then reacting with oxygen. So, each of those copper will give one electron on the oxygen moiety or to the oxygen moiety to reduce it by 2 electron 
and it would be paroxo same over here as you have seen earlier, but, um, but you know that this is also electrophilic in nature these oxygen and these are nucleophilic in nature we have discussed these earlier, but these sort of species are very very well established and uh, in a number of enzyme you have seen which has such structure such as hemocyanin which just carries oxygen in, in, uh, in crab and uh, crayfish and so on. Uh, so, this is the species forms in crab for and keep them alive. Their copper copper distance was nearly 3.5 angstrom to 3.6 angstrom between these two copper and oxygen oxygen stretch is around the 730-40 region. So, this is the species which is responsible also for tyrosinase activity remember the phenol or tyrosine is getting hydroxylated to catechol and can then also be further oxidized to quinone benzoquinone right. So, this is the species without substrate it just acts as a oxygen carrier in enzyme like such, such as hemocyanin, but with a substrate it oxygenates right of course, many other reaction we have seen that it can carry out right oxygenates the substrate ok. So, none of this or that one is forming when iron is in the mix, when iron porphyrin is in the mix none of these are forming ok. Another interesting thing is for the porphyrin system you can first form a superoxo species, then you can reduce it further to form the paroxo. If you are taking starting with iron to reacting with oxygen you will get a iron 3 superoxo species first where iron gives up one electron to oxygen and then further one electron reduction by adding a reducing agent one can get the iron 3 paroxo species as is shown in here. But none of these species are actually you know forming there when iron and copper are mixed together instead what they decide is they decide to share the responsibility ok. They try to be friend with each other and they try to reduce the oxygen together of course, one of them acts first and the other one acts sec then subsequently right. In this case as you have seen iron donates the um, electron first to oxygen and then copper donates ok. See this sort of clarity is quite interesting and it has come over the studies studies over the decades right. So, um, as you have seen this is crystallographically characterized oxygen oxygen stretch is 790 wave number iron copper distance is 3.92 angstrom ok. Once again remember the iron copper distance was 5.19 angstrom in cytochrome C oxidase, but here this is 3.92 of course, that iron copper distance was from for the reduced form. So, it is expected that perhaps also in cytochrome C oxidase um, iron and copper distance will be around 3.9 angstrom where both iron and copper has to move closer to each other if they have to uh, communicate through these oxygen centers right. So, without without uh, oxygen this uh, we believe that or it is believed that iron copper will be far from each other a uh, little bit far like 5 angstrom far and with oxygen it would be closer ok. Now, um, well one of the thing is so far we did not show, show what would be the iron copper oxygen orientation or the geometry around the copper and iron for the tridented case because remember this is a tetradented ligand system as you can see also and in enzyme in cytochrome C oxidase it is essentially a tridented ligand right. So, this may not be the case in although the you know electronics uh, or I mean the reduction will be similar reduction of oxygen will be similar but then the geometry should be as you can uh, expect this should be side on or eta 2 as you see over here, but as you see for tridented ligand this is side on on both. So, therefore, the copper is expected to be that actually now there are some evidences which suggest that this is perhaps or this is likely to be the correct orientation. 
So, you see the oxygen oxygen stretching and iron copper distance these are these are now can be measured by different spectroscopic technique and uh, although the crystal structure does not exist, but the side on peroxide bridging with tridentate copper ligand is likely the scenario most likely I would say I think uh, you know this is the beauty of the bio inorganic or synthetic bio inorganic chemistry coupled with spectroscopic and computational studies. Now we uh, as a community synthetic community and the bio inorganic community as are quite sure that uh, this is the case in enzyme. So, this is how iron copper will be bound with oxygen where oxygen is reduced by 2 electrons. Let us go, go back one time to the enzyme. Here you can see this iron copper will bind the way we were showing perhaps over there. This is a crystal structure of the reduced form, there is no oxygen uh, binding, dioxygen binding or the superoxo or peroxo binding right over here. That crystal structure is not really known. Okay. And, um, what we see next is uh, how how these species are are then further reacted to form water. We did not see that yet, right? Well, let us go back to the enzyme one more time. Okay, this is a schematic presentation. Show how the reduction of of uh, of oxygen to water is happening. Okay, uh, if you have followed, show iron will give one electron to the oxygen first to form iron 3 superoxide, then copper will come into the picture it would be copper 2 iron 3 peroxo species and from there on a, uh, a hydrogen atom transfer likely happening from this phenol which is cysteine and uh, uh, sorry uh, ty tyrosine and histidine uh, cross linked phenol. This, uh, this phenol OH dot will be provided to this peroxo species to cleave the oxygen oxygen bond that part we did not discuss yet in synthetic study. This is completely speculated mechanism um, you know based on some of the some of the synthetic studies been done, but we will see how people have or synthetic chemist have approached this problem right. So, so far we have seen superoxo formation and then peroxo formation and we know the geometry right. Uh, what would be the peroxo like? This would be iron 3 copper 2 peroxo most likely this is the case in a eta 2 eta 2 or side on bound geometry. What we now missing is proton and electron that can be coming from co coming from phenol unit to give you iron oxo and copper to hydroxo. If it is shown that this is what is forming from these peroxo species because these peroxo species are now well characterized, very well characterized right. These two are very well characterized and um, one thing we need to really get then uh, these uh, iron 4 and iron 4 oxo and copper 2 hydroxo formation which is nothing but water this is also nothing but water upon protonation both of them are water. So, essentially what you have seen if this is forming then it would be two equivalent of water, water here and water here upon protonation. So, this is what we would like to discuss what we have not seen synthetically that there is no axial ligand added will it have a role to play ok and uh, you know the proton count. Okay, for for the water molecule formation you need two proton over here another proton over here. So, as you can see two proton over here one proton is already there third proton another proton will be required that is fourth proton electron count is also absolutely perfectly matching to regenerate the catalytic cycle to undergo all these iron 4 copper 2 species and then subsequently come back or bring back to iron 2 copper 1 species overall you need four electrons ok. Let us look at what will happen to these peroxo species because these peroxo species are not forming this yet right nothing is happening which is closer to this. So, something need to be done to these peroxo species if we are to see that that uh, these species are forming ok. Of course, obviously it is happening in enzyme, but we do not know how it is happening and that is once again is the you know beauty of 
of the synthetic studies or, or these biomimetic studies, the bio inorganic fraternity thrives on such sort of problem where the almost nothing is known in, in terms of the enzyme and it is really kind of a black box and the light is shown or shaded right uh, uh, you know by, by the synthetic bio inorganic chemist. And this is what we now will see, we will try to start with this and try to see what is the role of an axial ligand, is it necessary, the role of phenol, is it necessary, is it what it should be, although we have proposed already, but this is what is most likely happening, but we need to see that these are really, really required or not, right, or without them these things still would go on or not, these oxygen, oxygen cleavage will go on or not. So, the big question now we would like to answer how the oxygen oxygen bond that is still present between these two atoms are going to be broken or this bond is going to be cleaved ok. So, here is first. So, this is a fully characterized system by now ok as good as it gets I guess. Most interestingly as you have seen now an axial ligand is added. Without this axial ligand things are not happening. It is not able to cleave that oxygen oxygen bond as you can see this oxygen oxygen bond without that axial ligand it is not uh, breaking ok. So, you need this dicyclohexyl imidazole or imidazole basically that is what you have in, in the enzyme histidine is appended or uh, attached with this iron center right. Without these things are definitely not happening. So, uh, let us add that one, this complex is also characterized, this complex is completely synthesized and characterized. Well, uh, even after that also things are not happening, what is turning out to be the case that if you add um, phenol such as this one, 24 dyed tertiary butyl phenol. Oh well, bingo, I guess that is fantastic. Now, you have this iron 4 oxo species formation which has a very characteristic band in UV visible and it has been previously synthesized independently by other method. So, to be sure these, these are really, really the species happening, but it is essential, absolutely essential to have this phenol. Without phenol, things are not happening. Okay. Now, uh, also this copper 2 hydroxide is forming, this phenoxy radical or O dot that is forming over there, of course, this is not going to be stable, it is going to dimerize to give the, uh, give this carbon-carbon adduct. If you are blocking this phenol with another tertiary butyl group over here, that would be 2, 4, 6 tri tertiary butyl phenol, then this sort of coupling will not happen and you will end up getting phenoxy radical which can be characterized uh, by other spectroscopic technique including UV visible, EPR and so on. So, what we are trying to tell you here is it was absolutely necessary to have this phenol as well as this axial ligand and that is why perhaps, perhaps in nature we see that both the axial ligand is there and the tyrosine, uh, tyrosine histidine cross linking is there. I think that is quite phenomenal to be able to really show that, that these all these components are absolutely required. You need iron, you need copper, of course, oxygen is required, axial ligand is required, phenol is required that is why tyrosine histidine cross link is there for the oxygen, oxygen bond cleavage in molecular oxygen to give water. That is I think quite exciting ok. In other word you can do the similar studies even with a tetradented ligand system where you can start with a peroxo species, iron 3 peroxo species independently generated superoxo reduced by one electron iron 3 peroxo and then add copper ok. This uh, can form an adduct as is shown over here and then still you need a proton source which can give another alternative pathway of forming hydroperoxo intermediate. Here you see the proton and an extra electron in the form of 
synthesizing the paroxo is already given. So, H dot equivalent is given which was coming from phenol in the enzyme. Now, it is given in the form of H plus and another electron on the superoxo to form the paroxo. So, you started with iron 2 reacted with oxygen to give iron superoxo and then you give another electron to make it iron 3 peroxo. This electron extra electron and this proton is the H dot. Overall then you add a an axial ligand once again you end up forming iron oxo copper 2 hydroxo. So, this is this is I think is really really getting clear where each of the iron and copper will give one electron each, iron gives first then then copper gives the electron and then 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 you have a still a requirement for a proton and electron that is coming from your tyrosine moiety and and uh, the role of axial ligand is also very very clear overall starting from oxygen molecular oxygen you have iron 4 oxo which requires protonation to give you water this a copper 2 hydroxo another equivalent of water is right over there upon protonation. Just to summarize then what you have seen, well it is a very very simple yet complicated yet interesting process right. Uh, you started with oxygen got to water and you now know how most likely things are happening, how stepwise things are happening and the role of each and every component in this uh, in this cytochrome C oxidase or heme copper oxidases. Well, I think nature did not put anything for fun, everything has a role right. Whether we understand or not, it may take decades, it may take centuries or we may never understand, but nature has deliberately decisively put each and everything right over where it is absolutely required. Nothing is placed just for fun, everything has a role to play, everyone is a part of a bigger game, everything is synchronized. I think that is that is what we, we really need to appreciate nature that that everything is where it is supposed to be, everything has a purpose. I think I think we, we, we begin to understand with the scientific journey, we begin to understand with scientific community how things are happening, how things are so perfectly designed. To understand this it is very very difficult always to for scientists, for researchers to do the experiments on enzyme itself or in the biological system and this is where precisely the role of a synthetic bioinorganic chemist or biochemist, bio, uh, biomimetic chemist comes into the picture and they really are crucial in putting the puzzles links pieces together. As you have seen the key of this process was iron 4 oxo formation and the copper 2 hydroxo formation for two water molecule from oxygen and many different pathway can give you the same result starting with a paroxo ligated with a uh, imidazole and coupled in with a phenol gives you there. You can start with a paroxo upon adding one more electron from the outside and then one equivalent of copper, one equivalent of proton and one equivalent of base. Overall all the paths lead to the same product. So, so different, different routes are lead to one target and that is oxygen oxygen bond cleavage to give water and that is phenomenal I would say by different path it is actually possible to show that exactly same thing is happening and uh, the ligand has a key role to play tridented versus tetradented as you have seen. But all of these pieces together uh, kind of giving a larger than life picture or clearer picture that this is what is happening ok. I hope uh, you understood the chemistry behind this oxygen to water formation now from for, for cytochrome C oxidase. We will come back uh, I think next class we will be discussing the uh, non-heme iron enzymes right ok. Keep studying thank you very much.